and it's causing people not to be able to see it because it's, it's cutting in and out of it. If you own the Wi-Fi, you got to get off of the Wi-Fi. You own the Wi-Fi? Your Bible don't need the Wi-Fi, do it? Just Wi-Fi. If you own Wi-Fi, you know if you have a Wi-Fi, you got you to gotta get off the Wi-Fi. Um, one last uh, song, and then we're going to get into the uh, children's lesson. Uh, Psalms chapter 9 and verse 18. Psalms chapter 9 and verse 18. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. He says the needy shall not always be forgotten. Even right now, if they think that ain't nobody thinking about their work, they're not going to always be forgotten. You know what I'm saying? Read that from that from that point again. The needy will not always be forgotten or whatever. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. So, even if you don't help, even if you forget to give, to lend your hand, the most I want. So, I just want to... I feel I feel it's cold now, man. The bees ain't gonna be up there. Yeah. But, yeah, the bees will take it down. And I can't even lie. My, <laughs> my mom was down there. She, she, hey, every time she stepped out the car, it was on her head. No, they wasn't no joke. We was down My aqua was down there boxing with them. You know what I'm saying? That's how you got so quick. You down there with the bees, you know what I mean? But, yeah, man, I just want y'all to, you know, keep that in your mind about the, about the needy. Um, but, yeah. So, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into this, man. Let's shake off the, you know, shake off the, uh, the being down for a minute. How my children doing today? Y'all all right? Yeah. I ain't going to call y'all kids, man. My brother Perry kind of hit me with that. Well, he ain't necessarily say it, but he said it. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, I got my kids. I mean, my children. I don't want to call them kids because that's ghosts. So from then on, every time I say kids, I got to change my, you know, my vocab. But appreciate you, brother. Right? So, children. How y'all doing today? Y'all look real sluggish right now. So, I contacted parents this week. Right? Y'all ain't getting no bad report. You know, y'all was good this week. You forgot about it? So you was good and you forgot about it. That wasn't talking about it. You forgot about it too? Well, I asked your dad. I ain't asked your mom. Oh, let me ask, let me ask your mom. Mom, was Shayla good to you this week? Or this shit? A little bit attitude? Always. Always. <laughs> well? What? Kennedy? She? Same thing? Because I didn't, I didn't talk to any mothers. I talked to the wrong people. That's right. Sister Michelle? No problem. No problem. Sister Joe Cheryl? You was good? You was good? Y'all was good? Okay. All right. Well, y'all three in trouble. Y'all just talk. But y'all gonna, gonna learn today. Who, who that? Who? Which one? Uh, Josh? Oh, dipping your hands in the cookie jar. Okay. Well, we're going to deal with this today. And, parents, I do want y'all to know y'all cannot relax on this lesson because this is going to be for y'all as well. Just like what we did, the, uh, the lesson concerning the father and the mother, the husband and the wife. On the day it was for the husbands, what was it mainly talking about? Wives. wives. The day it was about the wives, what was it mainly talking about? So this is concerning the children. The children are going to get what they're going to get. But I do want y'all to understand that your child is a product of who? You. Of you. Right? So... 
Let's get Psalms. Matter of fact, yes. Let's get Psalms 127 and verse 3. I see. Hold on, wait. Hold on, man. Uh uh. Y'all got to fill these seats up up here. I need my usher. I need an usher. My children, where y'all doing? If I get up, there's going to be trouble. Come on, I need y'all to fill my seats up, man. Fill, fill the seats up. I need y'all to be right here. I need to see your, the whites in your eyes. You know what I'm saying? It's a serious business. Right? Come on, ladies. How y'all doing today? How was y'all week? Y'all all right? How was school? It was good? Y'all getting good grades? Huh? Y'all getting good grades? You getting good grades? Yes? Okay. Okay. All right. Parents, y'all got y'all ears open? We good? Everybody good? All right. Psalms 127 and verse 3. Please don't fall asleep on this one. Because like I said, it's going to be bouncing back and forth from them to y'all. Right? Psalms 127 and 3. Psalms chapter 127 and verse 3. Uh-huh. Lo, children are an heritage of Yahuwah. It says the children are a heritage of Yahuwah. Y'all are a gift. Did y'all know that? To your parents, you are a gift. You understand that? Go ahead. And the fruit of the womb is his reward. And the fruit of the what? The womb is his reward. Have y'all ever seen in the Bible how a lot of people wanted to have kids? Like a lot of women that was barren. They was trying their hardest to have kids. Yeah. That's a reward. Right? From the most high. You. You, 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 you. Y'all was rewards. Right? Y'all can clap it up for that if you want to. You know what I'm saying? Y'all want to clap it up? Okay. Parents, do y'all feel like y'all got rewards in y'all kids or some headaches? Which one? Rewards. I know some of y'all telling kids over here. We're going to leave that alone, though. All right. <clears throat> Psalms 128 and 3. Matter of fact, don't keep reading that up. As an arrow are in the hand of a mighty man, mm -hmm. so are the children of youth, mm. of the youth. Happy is the man that have quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed. How many of y'all got a lot of kids? A lot of kids. Oh, you got a lot, brother. You happy? Happy? A lot of happy, happy, happy. Happy. A lot of children. Happy. A lot of children. Yeah, no no goats. No goats. A lot of children. Huh? Standard? Oh, it's that. Oh, it's that. See, I didn't know what you were saying because the way you said it. You know what I'm saying? When you used to say ecstatic, you were like, ecstatic! You were like, ecstatic. Okay. Psalms 128, verse 3. Psalms chapter 128, and verse 3. Uh huh. Thy wife shall be. As a fruitful vine. So he's talking to a husband, right? So you got the husband. He says, your wife shall be as a fruitful vine. Like my wife, right? She can't stop. Right? Go ahead. <laughs> thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the size of thine house. Uh -huh. Thy children shall like olive plants round about thy table. So this is a family, right? You got the father... The uh, mother and the children. You guys, this is where you come in, right? Let's go to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17. Matter of fact, I think it's verse 20. We'll see. Colossians chapter 3. Don't write the verse down yet. Let me get there. Let's see. How many of y'all are happy with the parents that the most I gave y'all? Y'all happy with the parents the most I gave y'all? Why is you got that smile on your face? What does what that mean? I raised my hand. Okay. That's why. Your hand ain't raised, brother. I raised my hand. Oh, you did? Oh, you, that was one of them. You got two hands up. That's good. You got your hand up. Okay. All right. All right. Well, let's see. How do y'all treat y'all parents? Y'all treat them good? Yes. So if I ask them the same thing, y'all treat them good? Huh? No. Shayla, no. Tariq, no. Kennedy, no. Josh, no. Don't laugh. You do? Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Parents, y'all ain't off the hook yet. Y'all ain't off the hook. All right. Colossians 3 and 19. Colossians chapter 3 and 19. Go ahead. And not holding the head 
from which all the body is built by joints. You want three? Yeah, Colossians 2. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 3 and 19. Yep. My bad. Matter of fact, start at verse 18. We got to get a whole family thing there, right? Children, what's, what's, in the, what's, in, what's consistent of the family? What, what you need? A what? A father, what else? A mother, what else? Who the children? Who the children? Me, brother, and sister. Y'all, right? All right, go ahead. Colossians chapter 3 and 18. Uh -huh. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Uh -huh. And it, it is fit in Yahuwah. It says, wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as it is fit unto Yahuwah, right? So mothers, the way that you act towards your husband is the example that you set it for your child. This is off the rip. This is the example that you're setting for your child to treat her husband. Right? I want you to get this in your mind. Because if your child sees you disrespect your husband or sees you say, oh man, I don't want to do that, what is going to make them do? Do the same thing. When it comes to them getting a husband, what is it going to do? Make them do the same thing. You are their immediate example even without telling them a word. Read on. Husbands, love your wives. Uh -huh. And be not bitter against them. Same thing for us, fellas. We are the immediate example. How many of y'all got boys? How many of y'all got boys? Right? So, you know that you want to teach your son how to be the best husband he can be. You want to teach your son how to be the best man that he can be. How many of y'all want to teach your sons to be better than you? How many of y'all know that that's bad? How can you teach him to be something better than what you are? You sure? When Hamashiach, was Hamashiach better than his father or was he like his father? Why was he like him? That's an example. He could he, he couldn't teach him how to be better than him. You have to teach your son to be the man that you be the man that you want to be and impute that on your son. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hamashi not gonna kill? No. You that, that was Hamasia that was doing that. That's the same person in the Old Testament that's doing it in the New Testament. But who? There's one that gives the order, and there's one that does the doing. So look, I'll put it to your perspective like this, right? The father only, uh, give me uh, John chapter 12, verse 49. John chapter 12, verse 20, 49. Let me show you something. Now remember, Amashiach said, you have, neither, you have never seen nor what? Heard my what? My father. So who was it the whole time? 49. It was Mashiach, right? 1249. I got you. I got you. Absolutely not. I'm going to show you. Go ahead. John chapter 12 and 49. Uh huh. For I have not spoken of myself. Uh huh. But the Father which sent me. So. Was him sending him in the flesh the only time that he sent him? No. Sodom and Gomorrah. Who did the destroying? Mashiach. He rained down fire and brimstone from who? From the Father. Read. And at the same time, who did he give grace to? Lot. 
the grace and the punishment go hand in hand. Right? Hold on. Go ahead. For I have not spoken of myself. I have not done what? Not spoken of myself. Go ahead. But the Father which sent me, uh -huh. he gave me a commandment uh -huh. what I should say and what I should speak. So he the one who gives him everything that he should do. So even with him dying and giving you grace, who commanded him to do it? The Father. The Father. Go ahead. You see the Son. Exactly. That's why nobody's ever seen him. If you hear the problem, you do what? You die. So who's it been? So we had to go through the Son because the Father was death. The Son was life. The Son was better than the Father. How? I... You, Hold on. When you get to the Father, it's death, like so. So uh, to, to okay. have that, that grace, okay. you need the Son. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15. How not? Ah, right, listen. The son is the one who's doing what the father is telling him to do. So who commanded the son to give life? Who commanded the son to give life? So who get wait, wait, wait. So who gave life? So who commanded the Father, I mean, who commanded the Son to give grace? So how, if he's doing exactly what the Father is doing, is he better? First Corinthians chapter 15. And get verse, hold on, I got you. First Corinthians 15 and Yep, chapter 15. First Corinthians 15 and Start at verse 55. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 55. Uh -huh. Oh, death. Oh, who? Oh, death. Because the father, you said the father is death, right? You see the father, you die, right? The father is death, right? Go ahead. Where is thy sting? Uh -huh. Oh, grave. Where is thy victory? Uh -huh. The sting of death is sin. Uh -huh. And the strength of sin is the law. Uh huh. But thanks be to the Most High. Thanks be to who? To the Most High. Thanks be to who? The Most High. Go ahead. Which giveth us the victory through who? Through who? Who shall have a seer. Which means that the Father is giving you life, but He's using His Son to do it. Read. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of your Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in your wood. So, when all things are committed under the feet of Hamashiach, what does he do with it? Huh? He gave it back to the Father who is greater than he. Let's see it throughout the book. Out of his own mouth. John 14, 28. Yes, yes. The book of Hamasiah, you agree with my eyes. Chapter 14, yes, yes. and yes, yes. verse 28. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you loved me, you would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than that I read it again. For my father is greater than I. So Masiach just said that my daddy better than me. Absolutely. Not the other way around. So the father is definitely greater than Masiach. 
There's no contest. Even though they just alike, the Father is definitely the greatest. We have we agree? Anybody agree? Yes. We not we can't agree with his word. We we not that later. Okay. So uh, the point I was making is in order to teach somebody how to be a man, what do you have to do? You have to be a man. Right? You can't teach better than what you know. You can only impute on somebody what you know. Right? Uh, let's get 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Now, it's twofold. Because even though you're teaching your children what they need to know, what they need to learn, guess what, children? Who has to apply it? We do. Teresa, sit up. Please, thank you. So, I want, I'm going to ask y'all a question. How many times have your parents went over the commandments with you in life? Like, you can't count, can you? So many, right? It's, it's ridiculous, right? How many times have your parents told you right from wrong? Oh, my goodness. It's a whole bunch, right? How many of y'all still get in trouble? <laughs> wow, it's a bunch, right? So what does this mean? It means you're not applying what they're telling you. Do y'all agree? Yes? You don't know? I heard you haven't had a whooping in a long time. Not really. It's been a long time since you got a whooping, right? So he's been pretty, he's been pretty smooth, right? <coughs> Keep it that way. Boy, you figured it. You don't think it's just that easy. You don't know who figured it. Right? And he got those hands. <laughs> so, I want y'all to think about that. Read what you got, huh? Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Uh huh. For we must all appear before the judgment seat. Who? Before we must all appear before the judgment seat of Amasia. How many of us gotta appear before the judgment seat? All of us. Raise your hand if you gotta go before judgment by yourself. All of y'all hands should be raised. When it's time for the most high and his son to rain down judgment on you, you think your parents gonna be there to help you? Y'all said no, right? What about y'all? I just said no. No? What you think? What you think? Yeah. No, right? So if judgment day was today, and it was solely based off of what your parents said that you do wrong to them today, how many of y'all be in trouble? One, two, three, four. So I just want y'all to look at that. If it all went down right now, and the most high said, hey, I'm about to ask your mama, do you disrespect me? If you disrespect your mama, I am going to get you. What's that sound? What's that sound? Y'all don't know that sound? It's a fire sound. Shayla, same with you. Kennedy, same with you. Josh, same with you. Elijah, same with you. Same with all of y'all. If I asked, if the Most High said that your eternal life in fire is solely based on your respect to your parents, how many of y'all would burn? You raised your hand up pretty confidently, my brother. That means that needs to change. Do y'all understand that? Alright. We're going to see. We're going to see. We got to keep going. Give me Proverbs chapter, matter of fact, Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 11. Because everybody got to go before judgment, right? Everybody agree? 20 and 11. Everybody got to go. How many of y'all got grown kids? Grown kids, grown kids, grown kids. Something that you're not quite proud of. I mean, we family. You know what I'm saying? Right? 
that's not necessarily doing what they're supposed to do, that's not walking in the way, right? I mean, y'all got, right? Proverbs 20 and 11. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 11. Even a child is known by his doings. Even a child is what? Known by his doings. So even though it's up to your parents to teach you, to show you, it says a child is what? Known by his doing. At the end of the day, you're going to be known for what you did. You understand? You're going to be known for what you did. Read. Whether his work be pure and whether it be right. Mm. So, we got to understand that everything that you do is considered works, whether it's good or bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. You're going to be judged based upon your works. Parents, you will be judged based upon what you imputed on your children. <coughs> How many parents in your everyday walk, your everyday life, and how you've dealt with your children since the time they were born to right now can say you're absolutely sure that you did everything right concerning your children. We're going to see by the end of the lesson. We're going to see. Because I guarantee you, we've all failed in one aspect or another. You can, don't get it twisted. You can be the reason your child gets killed in his earth. You can be the reason your child gets, get, gets it, right? Don't get it twisted. We're going to see. Proverbs 22 and 6. Oh, yeah. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. All right? Let us hear the conclusion of the entire whole matter. So now we're going to hear the end from the beginning. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Do anybody know the rest of this? Any of my children? Y'all know the rest of this? It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Anybody know what? Yeah. Do anybody know what your sole purpose on this earth is to do? Serve the most high. I like that answer. Anybody else? That's the whole duty of man. That's what we got. Get that out. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Uh -huh. Fear the most high uh -huh. and keep his commandments. So the fear is the first part. Right? And keep his commandments. How many of y'all fear hellfire? I know I do. Right? How many of y'all keep his commandments? All of them. I need to see hands drop. I need to see hands drop. Your mother just said that you disrespect her. I need, I need to see hands drop. Right? This is what you got to understand. What, what, is, what, is, what is one of the commandments that, that, that we're dealing with right now? Honor your mother and your father. If you show a disrespect, you ain't doing that. And if you break one, you do what? Break them all. Right? So we got to understand this, right? Let's move to Proverbs 22. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 22. Oh, but this out though. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, get verse 14 too. Fear the most high and keep his commandments. Uh huh. For this is the whole duty of man. Uh huh. Hey, children, I need y'all in the front. Go ahead. This is the whole duty of man. For the Most High shall bring every work into judgment. He gonna do what? He gonna bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, oh, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So, how many of y'all, when your mama told you not to go and get the cookies, you went and got the cookies? Raise your hands if you did. I want to know. How many of y'all, when your parents said get off the phone, you got back on the phone? How many of y'all, when your parents said do your homework, you went and did what you wanted to do? No, no, I did my homework. He says every secret thing is going to be brought to the light. 
Even if you think you outsmarting your parents, guess who you can't outsmart? Exactly. Guess who looking at you all the time? Yeah. You know when you go in a room and you slam the door, you're like, oh, I can't stand my mama, my daddy. You know who watching you? Yeah, who? Right? Get it. Come that time. Absolutely. Ain't nobody getting by. Ain't nobody going to get away with nothing. Right? Proverbs 22 and 6. Parents, how many of y'all that had your kids do something, your children, do something behind your back when you was like, man, I just told you not to do that. Okay. How many of y'all used to do that when y'all was younger? How many of y'all parents told y'all, just how you answer me, you gonna get it right with your kid? I'm not. 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 i am not i am not i am not i am not i Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. How many of y'all been training? How many of y'all been training y'all children? Right? Let me, let me ask y'all a question, parents. What nature was your child born in? A sinful nature, right? So when he give you the command to train them up, it's because when they coming out, what's their mindset? Even if they don't know it. When you tell your children to, um, when you say, hey, go over there and, 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 and lay down, and out of the blue, your baby tell you, no. You didn't teach them to tell you no, but they did it. And it's like, well, what are you talking to? You didn't teach them that. You get what I'm saying? When they say certain smart remarks to you, even when they babies, you didn't teach them that. You get what I'm saying? So when he tell you to train up your babies, it's a, it's a reason why he's saying it. When Adam did what he did, Eve did what, they, what she did, man, it set, up, it set off everything. So now you got to work. You got to work. Right? They first child was who? Adam and Eve's first child was who? Cain, right? What did he do wrong? He killed his brother. Did they teach him how to work? This was the first one. No. Did they teach him that? No. But, they, but he did it. Right? We got to understand our babies is brought into this world. Give me Psalms 51. Our babies was brought into this world with this mindset. And there's nothing that you can do about it when they initially come out. But it's your job to correct it. It's your job to correct it. How many of y'all have ever had a dog? Y'all still got a dog? Josh, Elijah, right? How much time do your father or y'all spend training your dog? Every day. Non-stop? My dad's like two hours, two or three hours every day. Two or, two or three hours every day training a dog. How does the dog act? To y'all. Still fucking. <laughs> your dog, I mean, your dad even had, what did he have on his neck? A shock collar. And they still acting crazy, right? What if your parents had a shock collar on you? Who clap? That is cool, brother. It was a joke. Right? No, but if your parents had a shot collar on you every time you did something wrong, you'd be like, that. Right? You get your act right, right? Get him what I. He asked for it. <laughs> so, we got to think about that. Your dad spends up to two hours training a dog every day. Right? How much time do you all spend 
in the Bible every day? About an hour? Is that accurate, about an hour? Give or take? Hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on. Did you combine with the reading after dinner and what they read on their own? It might be... I, I, I give the benefit of the doubt. B-O-D. Y'all get the benefit. That don't mean it's true. Y'all just get the benefit of the doubt this time. <laughs> right? But everything that they impute on y'all, everything that they telling you to do right or wrong, that's what you got to do. It's like studying it. You got to be like, okay, they said, do this. Y'all you, smart, right? If they say don't grab a fork and put it in the in the in the uh, plug, the first thing you gonna do as a young child is do what? What's the first thing you gonna do? You gonna try to do it, right? But as you get older, as you get older, what do you think about in that type of situation? How many of y'all think critically? Y'all in school, y'all think critically, right? If they say, hey, don't take the fork and stick it in the plug, what's the first thing you gonna do now? You're going to look for a reason why, right? What could this do for me? If 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 I stick the fork in there, I'm about to get shot. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone, right? And if they don't give you a good enough reason, you might just do it anyway. They give you a good enough reason. I'm just saying. Not you. Not you. Okay. So. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 1. What are we supposed to be teaching our children? Parents. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Psalms 51. I'm sorry. Psalms 51 and 1. Thank you, brother. Psalms 51 and 1. This is us uh, speaking about that sinful nature, right? Psalms 51 and verse 1. Appreciate you, brother. Come on. Psalms chapter 51 and verse 1. Yes. Have mercy upon me, O Yahuwah, uh -huh. according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Mm -hmm. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity uh -huh. and cleanse me from my sin. Yep. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Go ahead. Against, against thee, thee only, have I sinned. And Ver, done, drop down to verse 5. Verse 5. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. I was shaped in iniquity. In sin, I was conceived. When we come out the womb, first thing we know is sin. That's the first thing we know. We don't know the most how we first come out. Not no more. If every man got to be taught of the Most High right now, right? So we got to understand. Uh, uh, give me, what's that? Proverbs 22 and verse, give me verse 15. Let's see what that say. Proverbs 22 and 15. So we got to understand, we was once there, right? We was once those same children doing that same stuff that our babies is doing to us. Right? So you got to have some type of understanding, some type of compassion. But a lot of y'all have too much. A lot of you give too much leeway. A lot of you don't do what you're supposed to do as a parent to get your child trained up. Proverbs 22 and 15. Let's read. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Is what? Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. It's just there. We have to understand this. We got to cope with this. It's just in there. It's the word. This ain't me. Right? So we got to deal with them according to knowledge, just like we would deal with our wives according to knowledge, right? But we can't be so lenient on our children. Because the day and age that we in right now is super lenient. How disrespectful for my, I'm not even going to call out a year. Yes, I am. 70s baby? No, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. How many of y'all disrespected your parents like the children disrespect you now today? Uh, who said they couldn't think of it? I mean, you would be on the curb somewhere, bleeding out from the stories I hear. 
I'm serious. I done heard it all. My mother would have knocked my teeth in my throat. Right? I done, man, I done heard some gruesome stories. I don't know if it actually happened, but I heard some, right? What was one of the main things that they did in order to get you that way? They did what? That ain't the way I'm supposed to do my kids. No, no, no. I ain't supposed to do my kids like that. Because my mom told me, hey, I ain't going to do you like my mom did me. Now. now, was I disrespectful? Absolutely. Did I have a smart mouth? Absolutely. Was I one of those children that thought that I was smarter than my parents at one point in time? Absolutely. Yeah. Hey. Now, now, because hey, your mom said the same thing, right? Now, let me ask y'all right now. Any parents, if your children go to jail, would you go bail them out? I want an honest answer. Right now, would you say, I got to go get my baby? Why? Why, 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 why? I want to know why. I just need one answer why. You just go get them? That's... Okay. You do what they did afterwards, you just go get them. Now, hold up. You told your child, I ain't coming to get you. Right? No. She told me, hold on, let me let me clear. <laughs> hold on. Hold on. Let's clear it up, hold up. Let me clarify. Let's clear it up. So basically, what she's talking about, she told us that if we was ever to sell drugs oh, okay. or do any of these type of things because you don't need to do none of this. You got food to eat, you got all of this stuff. And if you do this and you go to jail from it, I'm gonna leave you there. I'm not coming to get you. Okay. So how long did you think about that? All the time. <laughs> did you ever put yourself in that situation? Yes. Now, what was in the back of your mind when you was doing it? If I get caught, my mama. Right? My mama. Because this is the type of things that your parents instilled in you. You get what I'm saying? It was a type of fear that you had for mama that you was like, you would try somebody else outside of the home before you tried your mama. It's the opposite now. I would try my mama before I tried. I, and I never understood this, but my mom used to always say, I don't know how these people is saying that y'all is good and this and that and la la la. But when you get here, you do all of this. I didn't get it, but I, but now I do, right? Let's get on. Um, let's get. Oh, uh, finish this one. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. We're at twenty. Fifteen. Fifteen. All right. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Uh huh. But the rod, the switch. The stitching cord, the stick. The wet towel. The wet towel. Ooh, I got book, right? But the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. So he says the rod of correction is going to drive this foolishness far from him. When he said train up a child, he didn't just say tell him what the commandments are. He didn't just say, he said train. When you train, anybody ever train for, for basketball, football, any type of sport? When you train, when the coach told you to do something, was that okay? No. And if you didn't do it, what was what, what happened to you? It was a consequence. Who been to the army before? My brothers that been to the army, right? Can you explain to them what a burnout is? Oh, no, smoke. Smoke. Smoke burn. So yeah, smoke. So he says, you get exercise until your muscles fail. Have anybody ever experienced muscle failure? Oh, you did? How did it feel? Horrible, right? Now imagine going, now this was something you just did, right? Voluntarily. Now imagine if somebody did it to you and it was like out of your power to control it. Absolutely. So we got to understand. 
These babies need the rod of correction. Do you want to know why they disrespect you? Do you want to know why they don't do what you say? Do you want to know why they talk back to you? It's because you spared a rod like the ox said. And today, I promise you, I promise you today before it's all said and done, you're going to see why you ain't spoke. I promise you, I promise you, the attitudes that they give, the way that they act towards you and others is because you have held that belt on your waist. I promise you. Right? Granny said leave with me for a week. I party trail. I get him say yes, ma'am. No, no, ma'am. The whole nine. Y'all talking y'all. Right? The rod. No, it's not always a bell. But, hold on, hold on. But, oh, listen, listen, listen to me. When he's telling you about this rod here, it could be a belt, stitch a cord, switch. It, I'll, I'll, I'll explain it to you. Right, we gonna, we going to get, because cause that's what it think, That's what you think about, right? You think that it's abuse. In your mind, you like, this has got to be crazy. I, I don't understand why anybody would... Right? But I promise you, I listen, I promise you by the end of the lesson you're gonna understand why he say this. Black children know we start at the timeouts. <laughs> right? And all that mess. Right? Alright, I want I want y'all to stay with me. Stay with me, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. Shalom, y'all, how y'all doing? I miss y'all, we miss y'all. Oh, oh, hey, brother Tim, my man, I gotta holler at you. My man. It's good to see you looking at us. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt, man. Yeah, yeah, y'all talk about it. I'll pray for you time, man. No doubt. Now, have, when you watch old like medieval movies or, uh, or or shows or whatever, what was the most important thing to a family? Or any Italian movies? Honor. Honor, respect, but what was the main thing? Loyalty. But it was something that was that had to be held in a high regard, the family name. Do not soil my family name. Right? Y'all ever heard that? Have y'all seen people disown their children because they soiled the family name? Uh, uh, white folks, right? They will literally cut their children off of being with black folks. If you soil my family name, I ain't got nothing to do with you. How many of y'all still hold those same principles today? If you found out your child was homosexual, what would you, would you, hey, you got to beat it. I don't want nothing to do with you. How many of y'all would do that? Okay. Okay. Now, let's see something. Get me Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. Please somebody get it. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes 7 and 1. A good name. A good name is better than precious ointment. A good name is better than what? Precious ointment. Now, the name that you carry, children, is the name of your parents, right? You know the name, like your name is Shayla, the last name is what? Charles. Right? <laughs> this is the name that you carry, right? So in the in, in biblical times, they would literally call them after their father. So you have David, the, the David, the son of Jesse. I need y'all to pay attention to me. Are y'all paying attention? Right? David, the son of Jesse, right? Now you have a last name. This is, you know, whatever. Now your last name, right? Johnson is your last name. Josie is your last name. Orel is your last name. McDaniel, you're Orel too. Gil, you're Gil too. Johnson is your last Kennedy, name. Kennedy, the daughter of Cole. <laughs> uh, what's your last name, brother? Sure. Williams. What's your last name, sister? Smith. Smith? Okay. Sears. 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 Right. Sears. 
Sears. Okay, Sears, right? So all of us got last names, right? Now, in order to uphold your family name, you have to do what the family wants you to do, right? Get um, Proverbs 22 and 1. Parents, how many of y'all know about having a good name? Yes? Okay. What is something, can anybody give me an example of what their child could do to, to give their family a bad name? Steal something? What else? Murder somebody? What else? Public drunkenness? Steal. Right? Steal. Class clown. Homosexuality. Right? Okay, so all of these things are things that can soil a family's name or bring the name of the family to shame, to nothing, right? In vain, right? Um, let's get Deuteronomy 21. Hold on. 22 and 1. Man, I keep getting ahead of myself. I'm excited. Oh, sure. 22 and 1. It is better to be sold to the great riches and a loving favor rather than silver and gold. So he said a good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. Who'd rather have a good name than, than riches? Who want all the money? Show me the money. I feel you, brother. You said show me the money. Huh? Y'all want the money, right? Who'd rather have a good name? Taria, why would you rather have a good name? She says the name is going to continue to go on. Go ahead. Because money can't buy you happiness. <laughs> Why would you rather have a good name? So, when, so like when you get a job, or the people will be happy to accept you for a job. I like that answer. You get clout, right? Uh, you, you a give? Oh, man. I used to kick it with your daddy back in the day. He's a solid dude, man. Come on, man. I'm going to hire you on. Right? To get hired. To get hired? my brother said, they're going to judge you based on what anybody else that you share your name with. They're going to judge you based upon the person that came before you. Even if you're nothing like them. Right? So now, if you do something that opposes the name, they start to look at the name different, right? Okay. Give me that, um, Deuteronomy 21 and 18. How many of y'all want to see what used to happen if you were to soil your family's name? Children, I want them to come in. You want to see, Katie? You look like you want to see. You want to see? You want to see? I want to see what would happen, but not like in a formal video that isn't real. No, no, no. We're not going to show no videos. This is all out of the word. I know. Oh, you don't want to so you Okay, I got you, I got you, I got you. I got you, I got you. I got you, I got you. Uh, Deuteronomy 21, and start at verse 18. Parents, I need y'all to listen up too, for y'all that don't know about this scenario, right? This is what happened in the time of the Levitical priesthood, in the time of the law, where it wasn't no grace. I mean, well, it was grace, but it wasn't no... Uh, you know, Hamashi, I died for my sins type deal, right? Let's get that. Deuteronomy 21 and 18. Let's see. Now, if y'all think whooping your kids is abuse, y'all gonna think this is worth capital punishment. Deuteronomy 21 and 18. Let's see what's up. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, hold that. How many parents got stubborn and rebellious children? I, hey, you can. Hey, hey, hey! Tell the truth out here. I don't. You don't. You don't whoop them. Sure. Sure. Okay. We gonna see. We gonna see. You said grandbaby. Yeah. Grandbaby. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Hey, look, that's a child too. Is is your, is your grandbaby stubborn to you? Yes. 
Yeah, you, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening to her. See, yeah, I'm listening to her. All right, hold it down, hold it down. So we got we got stubborn children, right? All right. Hey, how many of y'all think y'all stubborn and rebellious at times? Hey, Kenny, if your daddy got to tell you to raise your hand one more time, you got to be honest. All right, this is for you. Okay, Shayla, you too. Right? All right, let's listen up. Deuteronomy 21, verse 18. Deuteronomy 21 and 18. Come on, y'all, listen up. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son or uh -huh. daughter, which will not obey the voice of his father. How many of y'all admitted to not obeying y'all parents before? Four. Yes, 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 right? Go ahead. Or the voice of his mother. How many of y'all have disrespected your moms? Yes, 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 right? Let's see. Read on. And that when they have chastised him. Now, have they chastised you for you being disobedient before? Yes. And then after that, you still did something disobedient? Yes. Yeah. Parents, yeah. How many, have y'all chastised them and then they came right back and did something they weren't supposed to? Okay, let's go. Hey, Lele, how you doing? You all right? I want you to start participating too. All right? Come on. And will not hearken unto them. I mean, you, have you not listened to your father before? Yeah? I see that smile, all right? Where BJ at? Right there. You too, BJ. All right, come on. See? We're going to get into that. And, and parents, I pro like I said, I promise you by the end of the day. I, I promise you. Come on. Let's start it over. Yep. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, uh -huh. which will not obey the voice of his father, yeah. or the voice of his mother, mm -hmm. and that when they have chastised him, will not hearken unto them. What do y'all think the chastisement was? Y'all think it was a verbal warning? It was a warning, right? It was a whoop. Think it was a whoop? I thought it was a dummy. Uh -huh. that, the chastisement first, right? Read. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him. After they whoop you and you still act in a mess, they're going to lay hold on you. I need y'all to imagine your parents with the most serious look on their face. One grabbing one arm and the other grabbing another arm to walk you out the house. Read. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him uh -huh. and bring him out unto the elders of this city. Now, they bring y'all out in front of everybody in here today. Right here in the middle where y'all at. Y'all see y'all in the middle of everybody, right? All of y'all have admitted to being disrespectful, right? All of y'all done admitted to getting whoopings and went right back to it, right? So now y'all in the middle. Y'all see all the adults around y'all? Y'all in the middle, right? Parents, I need you to visualize this. Because this was what you were supposed to do. This was according to the law. Read. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him uh -huh. and bring him out unto the elders of his city and into the gates of a place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This is our son, is stubborn and rebellious. My, my children haven't done what they were supposed to do. They've been stubborn and they've been rebellious. We need y'all to do something about this. Right? I, I still want y'all to look at everybody around y'all. Y'all see all these adults, right? Yes. What happened next? He will not obey our voice. Uh huh. He is he is a glutton and a drunkard. Uh huh. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stone. They shall do what? Stone him with stone. What happens when you st get stoned? Die. You die. How do they do the stone? They cover you up. They bury you up they, to your neck, right? Exactly. Y'all ever been on the beach? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, did, did you bury yourself in the sand before? Yes. Imagine being buried down in the sand with only your neck out. Right? Yes. Just like that. Right? And they stone you with stones. So what is the only part of your body that they hit with the stones? Face. Your face. Your head. You don't have no arms to block to help you. Do y'all think that these stones were little pebbles? No. How big do y'all think these rocks were? Exactly. I need y'all to imagine this. Parents, I need you to imagine having to do this to your child. Because you got to be thankful. Not just the children got to be thankful that you ain't got to do this no more. But you need to be thankful. 
Read on. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones uh -huh. that he died. That he do what? That he died. It ain't no stop, 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 my baby, my baby, you heard me bleed. Ain't none of that. It's until, hold on, Brother Mark. It's until you're done. Because we're going to get to that. I promise you we're going to get to that. Because everybody who's thinking that uh, you don't have to, 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 to chastise your children in a, in a way where you get them a whooping, bring pain to them, you will see that it's not going to do nothing but lead them to the pit of hell. I promise you that. It's your job to discipline them in the way that they need to be disciplined. The respect that you have for other people is because your mother and father did it to you. Don't deprive the mother kingdom because you won't. Get me on. Um, I'm going to finish this up. Yeah, go ahead. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he died. Uh -huh. So shall thou put evil away from among you. You have to understand when you dis when you disobedient to your parents, when you stubborn to your parents, that's evil. That's an evil act that the Most High has no care for. And he, if he has no care for the things that you're doing, if you continue with him, he won't have no care for you. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Get up. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 13. And all Israel shall hear and fear. So if one of y'all got stoned, this is going to be an example. Right? If y'all seen somebody get killed like that, how many of y'all would still act the same way towards your parents? If you saw somebody, get, if you saw me getting dug down in the ground because of my disobedience to my parents, right? And they killed me with those stones. Would you do the same thing? Would you be disobedient? Absolutely not. Right? You would think about not being disobedient, right? All right. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 13. Matter of fact, yeah, Proverbs 23 13. Proverbs chapter 23 and 13. Mm -hmm. Withhold not correction from the child. Withhold not correction. Now, in this correction, it don't have to be you whooping them. Every time, it's not needed. Right? You know, especially fathers, when you talk to your son in a certain way, he's like, oh, yeah. I'm not doing that no more. Right? You don't have to talk, right? Oh, yeah. Right? But what did he have to do to you before for it only have to be the talk after? He had to put the fear in you somehow. Kennedy, you just had a spell, right? You just got whooping not too long ago, right? You know? So next time when your dad say whatever he said and he tell you, hey, you better, you better chill out, what you going to do? You're going to stop. Don't even, don't even let it get to that point. Somebody come get him before I do. <laughs> and, and the reason why I'm going so hard on this is because my son is a year and almost a year, almost a year and a half. Almost a year and a half, right? So, um, yeah, I would, I would definitely whip my son. I, I, don't, I don't have no shame in my game. I whip my baby, but my, my son loves me to the utmost, right? No love lost, no nothing. But I was told that I whooped it too much. Now I work. It's grandmother babysitting. It's mother with him. Right? It's aunties and uncles throughout the summer. So when I'm not there, the things that I instilled in him, the things he got whoopings for, he got away with. Him. So when I come home, now I gotta whoop him again. Why? Because the things that I instilled in him, it, it, it wasn't consistent with his, with his grandmother, with his mother, right? But now they're starting to see the product of what that does. Brother Jerome uh, beforehand told me, hey man, you got one of the best babies I have, I done seen. And now, he came to me like two weeks ago. That boy bad. Hey man, that boy bad, man. <laughs> and I'm like, well, you right. The only thing that I can say to that is not when I'm right there in control of what he does. That's the only thing I can say. Nothing. Sit down. My wife, Diamond, does 
Does does Shilo act the same way when I'm home that he do when I'm not? No. Not at all. Because I refuse to spare the rod. She doesn't say lady. She just had to put fire to him. Why? Because it's in them. The folly is in their heart, but you need to get it out some way. Right? Let's get Proverbs 29, 15. Finish that, finish that. All right. Withhold not correction from the child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. If you what? If you beatest him with the rod. Is this talking to him with the rod? If you beatest him with the rod. If you beat him with the rod, what's going to happen? He shall not die. He's telling me he ain't going to die. Whoop him. He's not going to die. She's not going to die. How many of y'all whooped your kids to death before? None of y'all, because they still here. They not going to die. Trust me, your love for your child won't let you go overboard with the whooping to where they perish. Read the next verse. Verse 14. You shall beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me beating your children is going to deliver their soul from hell? Wow. Wow. How many of y'all think that y'all y'all how many y'all glad that y'all get with us now? Y'all glad? Why is you glad that you don't get stolen no more? Ain't hurt though? I know it hurt. It's all hurt. Right? How many times have y'all got whoopings and your mom and daddy got tired and came back and whooped you again? Now hold up. Now now wait, wait, wait a minute. Now, when I was coming up, I got that to a degree. I didn't get it like they got it, but I got it. Get, get a whooping, mama go to sleep, you think she forgot about it, when she wake up, she whoop you again for the same thing. I promise you, right? It's not about just beating on your kids to beat on them. You gotta understand the bigger picture, man. It's a bigger picture with this. Because if you don't do it, you'll have situations where you get called home, hey, your son or your daughter is being disrespectful to the teacher. You get what I'm saying? You'll have instances where, hold on, Elijah. Excuse me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You'll have instances where you're out and about and your child is running around crazy. You at Walmart, you at Myers, your, your baby running around picking up stuff, dropping stuff on. You're going to have instances like this. And what people going to look at you and say? The same thing you say when you see their kids doing it? Hey, man, look at that. Look at that baby. I'll tear you up. They so run around there like that. And then when you get in the grocery store with your baby, they go, stop. Stop. Would you just put that down? Don't do that. That don't work with everybody. You got to give them that, that, uh, that Vulcan grip. Exactly. <laughs> See what we On the real. It look, it look real nice on the outside. Bro. <laughs> and you better not say nothing. Stop. Right? Look them in the white of their eyes and tell them, you can't be doing what you're doing. You have to understand when you do these things, tell them you're saving their soul. That's just like me telling somebody not to, not to be committing a certain sin. I'm, it ain't about me hurting your feelings. It's about me trying to help you from going to the pit for what you're doing. This is, what you, this is the correction. Right? Let's get on. Um, Let's get Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. Hebrews 6 and 1. When you got children that, that's bad, you know, I said children that's bad. You know what I'm saying? What do they say, man? Them, them snipes ain't got control over their kids. I don't know what them snipes be around there doing. They, they be letting them do this and do that. You know what I'm saying? So what is that doing to your name? Exactly. I want y'all to flip that, parents. Because he gave you instruction on how to deal with your children. Yes? A lot of us don't follow it. He says, you out of all of the families of the earth have I known. So what happens when you are the family that he know and you don't do what he say do? What are you doing to his name? You bring shame to his name. You an Israelite. 
and you going out here acting like you a part of the regular world. Don't nobody respect what you do. They looking at you like, oh man, that's just another fad. That's idiot. Whatever. They, they say they're Israelite, but I, I hear how they talk. I see how they walk. You know what I'm saying? You profess to be a, a man or a woman of the most high, your kids running around acting a plump fool. Like they don't teach you how to keep your kids together and everything. You get what I'm saying? This is real talk. Hebrews 6 and 1. Yeah. Hebrews 6 and 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Amasiah, let us go on unto perfection, uh -huh. not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works. So going on from today, this ain't the end of the lesson, but going on from today, the things that you did coming into this thing that got your kids disrespecting you and all that type of stuff, you got to cut that off. Is it going to hurt your baby's feelings? Absolutely. Is it going to hurt your feelings? More than likely. Do you know how hard it is when I whoop my son and I'm looking at him and he crying and he now he's reaching out for me, dad, dad? And I got to be like, no. That's a hard thing to deal with. Hamashiach was sitting up there on that cross, dying, been beat all for all out doors. You think the Most High wasn't up there saying, man, that's my son. He said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Do y'all understand what that means? But he had to say, you know what, son? Your iniquity separated me from you. He had to be hard to him. I can't deal with you right now. You got to do the same thing for your child. Why? Because you're saving their soul from hell. Verse 4. Verse 4. Start at verse 3. Verse 3. And this will we do if the most I permit. For it is impossible for those who once were enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Ruach HaKodesh and have tasted the good words of the Most High and the powers of the world to come. Y'all, parents, y'all have tasted of the good word, right? What happens if you go backwards like we spoke about? What happens if you act in a way that you ain't supposed to act concerning this word? out in the world for people to see, putting on the show. You out there with fringes on and acting like a heathen. What are you doing to his family name? You putting shame to his name. His name is going in vain, like my ox said right here. Go ahead. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, uh -huh. seeing they crucified to themselves, the son of the most high of fresh and did what and put him to an open shame the same way your child shames you when they do things that's not uh, uh conducive to your household your, your rulership is the same way that you are with the most high when you do things contrary to him you put him to an open shame just like they do in you like father like son like mother like daughter you got to get yourself together and children, this ain't y'all ain't off the hook. Yeah, y'all gonna get some more whoopers. It's gonna happen. All that, all that, all that attitude, y'all. Yes, you're gonna get some more whoopers. But it's up to you to decide if I'm gonna start from today and say, you know what? I'm making my duty to honor my father and my mother. I'm making my duty not to do things that's gonna make them mad. Right? Since we're talking about speaking, right? What's one thing that gets you in trouble the most? Y'all old enough now. It ain't about uh, don't go and get no cookies. It's your mouth. Parents, how many of your children got smart mouths? How many of your children are so smart that they know how to barely get in trouble? Meaning, they'll say something smart to you, but it'll be in a way where they can come back. Well, all I said was, they smart. They can't outsmart you, but they smart. I was, that man, I was the kind of sore of it. You know what I'm saying? And then I said in a low tone, so you can't say I was hollering at you. I didn't say nothing out the way, but I know how it made you feel. That was me. All y'all got told. I got 
to her, right? Let's go to, back to the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach. Let's get, um, hold up, hold that. Before you go there, let's go to Psalms 52. Psalms 52. How many of y'all got a problem with y'all lives, children? I don't want to hear sometimes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Shayla, yes. Tariq, yes. Kennedy, yes. Alexis, no? So if I ask your people right now, they, you good? Yes? Okay. All y'all, yes, right? Y'all got problems with your mouth at times. I know you got problems with your mouth sometimes. You, listen, you seem like a very, very good kid. You, you not? I, come here, come give me a five, man. Come here. Come here. I'm glad you said that. A lot of people can't admit it. You know what this, you know what the first step to recovery is? <laughs> admit when you're wrong. Okay? All right. Psalms 52 and 2. Psalms chapter 52 and 2. Thy tongue deviseth mischief. It did what? Deviseth mischief. How many of y'all children have thought about a lie to tell your parents to get something? Thought about a lie to get something from your parents? Thought about it, never went through it? How many of y'all lied to your parents before? What you lie about? What you what you say? What what they lie about? Yeah, what you lie about? You know. <laughs> what you just do? Say it, say it. What you just do? Say it. Say it. We don't talk at the house. You smack your lips, right? We can't have that. Y'all get this? It's the little things. It's the little things like that that would tick your parents off to the point they're ready to backhand you. Just that walking away, or that, <sighs> oh my goodness. Stop. I don't know where all this extra come on to the word at. Just stop. But she said, stop. And Roll your eyes. Demon. Yes, that's why she got attacked. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good word to use. That was an attack. Hold on, hold your, hold your, hold your, uh, hold your piece right now. Right? But your mouth gets you in trouble. Proverbs 18 21. Proverbs 18 Parents, we're coming back to y'all. Ain't nothing to do. Proverbs 8, 18 and 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. You speak things. Have y'all ever, like, just said something that didn't happen? Like, something bad was going to happen and then it's like, You remember exactly what it was? Have you done it too? Yeah, it's, it's not like bad, bad. Like, I mean, it don't have to be bad, bad. It's just, that, you know, yeah. you speak things. You know how they say you speak things into existence? So then I'm like, I'm making a video for YouTube. And then I say once I do blah, 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 I'll stop the video. And then all of a sudden, after I finish that sentence, the thing that I said would have stopped the video. Happened. And you didn't stop it on your own. You just stopped. No, no. So it's like, I play this game. Oh, what? did it stop, brother? I died. You died? Oh, okay. I got you. We're wrapped. We're wrapped. We're wrapped. We're wrapped. We're wrapped. Well, basically, your tongue can get you in a lot of trouble, right? Like the, like, the, like the epistle letters tell you, when it comes to your tongue, this, is, this thing can't be tamed, right? It's like a fire, right? This thing will get you in trouble. Smacking your teeth, all that, like like he says, stop up. All that mess. All that mess. I'm serious, all that mess. Even when you go in your room and you say, you know how all well, my parents told me before, if you go 
say something bad about me, or you gonna say you go in your room, close your door, so I can't hear. I mean, y'all, I mean, y'all don't want y'all room close your door like that. I mean, you ain't gotta admit it because I don't want you to get in trouble right now. Yeah. But, but guess what? Guess what, Lele? Guess what? Guess who here? Is that still disrespecting your parents even though they can't hear? Is that still taking the uh, days off of your life when you do that? Probably should stop that too, right? Let's go back to Ecclesiasticus. Talk about this mouth right quick. And then we're going to hit y'all with the jelly. In the jelly. Uh, Ecclesiasticus chapter 23. And verse 7. Yeah, it ain't part. It ain't part. Yeah, yeah. Ecclesiasticus chapter 23 and verse 7. Uh huh. Hear, O ye children, the discipline of the mouth. Hear, O ye who? O ye children. Hey, listen up, y'all. Right? Three. The discipline of the mouth. Uh huh. He that keepeth it shall never be taken in his lips. If you keep your mouth disciplined, you ain't gonna never get in trouble with your mouth. Feel me? So your job in the household thus far is to keep the commandments and make sure your family's name is upheld. So far, right? Good. The sinner shall be left in his foolishness. Uh -huh. Both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. How I many y'all uh, got pride in your heart? When you get in trouble, you so proud about it that you just you just forced to talk back. Like you, I, well, I didn't do it. No, I didn't. You just can't control yourself, right? Ain't nobody gonna tell me I'm in trouble. I ain't in trouble, right? I used to do that too. I, that's how I know. I, I know how you feel, but you gotta stop it. Read. <laughs> so we left in this foolishness, both the evil speaker and the proud shall fall thereby. Uh huh. Accustoms not thy mouth to swearing. Y'all in school, right? Have you ever heard somebody say, Man, I, I did that, I swear to God. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Man, I swear. Right? Don't lie. Right? How many of y'all have heard it so much that you start doing it? Yourself. Right? You haven't done it? Never? Not one time. My man. Right? But it said, read that. The custom not your mouth to swear. Go ahead. Neither use thyself to the naming of the Codest one. I put this on the most high. I put that on everything. Tariq? <laughs> Shayla? Y'all ever done that? I put this on my dad and grandma. <laughs> on my mama grave, on my grandma grave. Y'all heard people say that before? Yeah. You used it? You said that before? No. Mm -hmm. I don't. You done did it before? No, I don't. Hey. I Okay. I believe. I believe. See, you said you promised. Same thing. Right. Just saying, right? Let's see what the scriptures say about that. Right? Let's get Matthew chapter 5. Verse 34. Matthew 5 and verse 34. But I say unto you, swear not at all. What did he say? But I say to you, swear not at all. So all of y'all who've done that before or do it in school around your friends because you hear your friends saying it, stop. Today. A second ago. Cut it out. Okay? Read. Neither by Shamaim, for it is the Most High's throne. Let your yea be yea and your no be no. Okay? Because if somebody don't believe what you're saying, 
What do saying I swear to God gonna do? They ain't gonna do nothing. If they don't believe you, they don't believe you. But you just got yourself in trouble. Okay? Let's go back to uh, Ecclesiastes. Hold on. Hold on. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes. Chapter 23. Yep. Verse of Ecclesiastes chapter 23 and verse 10. For as a servant that is continuously beaten shall not be without a blue mark. So you know you're going to have a mark on your body if you keep getting beat, right? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So he that sweareth and nameth the Most High continuously shall not be faultless. You're going to get in trouble if you keep on saying you swear. You swear to God. You, I swear on this. You're going to get in trouble. You're not going to be found faultless. Hold on, hold on. You're not going to be found faultless. Y'all do understand that, right? Do y'all, I'm talking about really, do you understand? Yes. Okay, next verse. A man that uses much swearing shall be filled with iniquity, uh -huh. and the plague shall never depart from his house. Mm. Go ahead. If he shall offend, his sin shall be upon him, and if he acknowledge not his sin, he maketh a double offense. Now this is key. When you do wrong to your parents, do you admit up to it? Yeah. After the whooping or before it? Before and after. That's good. You got to own up. Fess up to what you done. You know what I'm saying? Or it's going to be a double offense. You done did the crime, and now you're going to lie about it, or you ain't going to fess up. What ended up happening when you're in a room with your brothers and sisters, and be like, hey, y'all better tell me who did it, and everybody quiet. What ended up happening? Everybody, everybody get it. <laughs> right? Tell the truth. Read on. He maketh the double offense, and if he swear in vain, he shall not be innocent, but his house shall be full of calamities. Uh -huh. There is a word that is closed about with death. The Most High grant that it not be found in the heritage of Jacob. Who's the heritage? The children. It's no need to be found among y'all. You understand what I'm saying? How many of y'all used curse words before? Y'all better tell the truth. Have you used the curse word before? Listen, 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 listen. Your parent, listen. Your parents will not whoop you for this. Do y'all wait, wait. Oh, okay, okay. How many of you have used profanity? It was an accident? No, was it? No. Nope. From the atmosphere. Was it an accident? You? 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 The boys said from the atmosphere. That's what I'm saying. They slick now. Mama, it wasn't me. It was because of my atmosphere. It was in the air. It just was like whoosh. And I say it. Right? <laughs> Y'all have to understand that this stuff is not a good thing. It, it's all right, man. We, <laughs> what's wrong? Elijah. Come here, bro. Come here, Elijah. Come on. Come here. It's all right, bro. <laughs> Come here. Let me take some here. Come here. Come here. Y'all listen up. What, what, what he going through right now is conviction. You understand that? You know how when y'all when y'all admit to certain things and then you you be smiling and you 
That's not what he's going through right now. He feel bad about what he done. Y'all need to feel the same way. This is what I guarantee you he won't use profanity anymore because of how he feel right now. You get what I'm saying? This stuff's supposed to weigh down on you. Because if it don't and you continue to do it, where you gonna end up? Say again? Say that loud. The pits of hell. You'll find your way. Death. Absolutely. You will find your way. And if you don't make the path, it's gonna find its way to you. You gotta understand that. Right? Let's get to Rock chapter 30. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30. Only a couple, like we only got like two more after this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 30. How many of y'all want to make your parents proud of you? To the point where you're like, oh man, man. Your dad and your mom, they can brag about you and not be telling no fear. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, y'all know, y'all know. Oh, yeah, my son, my daughter, bro. You'll be like, man, my wife. <laughs> right? Y'all done seen it happen before, right? You said your mama do it. You know? Your dad do it. Yeah. You want them to say it and actually be telling the truth. Right? Which means you have to change what you do in order to get them that feeling. You understand? Your parents shouldn't have to put their hands on you. Y'all feel me? It's Rock 31. This is, parents, I need y'all to listen up. This is mostly concerning y'all. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 and verse 1. Uh huh. He that loves his son. He that do what? He that loves his son. He that loves his son. Causes him off to feel the rod. Causes him often to feel the rod. If you love your child, you're going to make him feel it. Because what? Uh, pain is a. Uh, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Motivator. It's a motivator. It's a motivator. So. With my son, I see it already. The thought of me getting ready to whoop him for something that he's doing, before he even get ready to do it. If I got my phone on the table, I say, don't touch my phone. When he get ready to do it, he be like. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? It's the thought, like, oh, man, I got to whoop him before. Him. And that hurt it. Right? It's a motivator. If you if you telling your child not to do something and they continue to do it, Saying, hey, don't do that. I'm gonna take your phone from you. I'm gonna do man, listen. You can take electronics from from kids. You can do it'll hurt for a minute. But the what you instilling in them is you just won't have your phone. So when they actually do it right, it's go it's because of the phone. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't want to get it. I want my phone. So no, what does that mean? That don't mean nothing. You know what I'm saying? They have to know that you disapprove. If you love them, you'll show them that. Read on. He that love his son causeth him off to feel the rod, that he may have joy of him in the end. Didn't the most high have his son feel the same thing? Didn't he have joy in him when he rose him up out of the dead? Oh, what you got? Get Proverbs 13, 24. Because it says if you love them, you're going to make them often feel the ride. We're going to be jumping back and forth. Proverbs 13, 24. Just a couple of them. Proverbs 13 and 24. Uh-huh. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. So you love him if you put the rod on. But you hate him if you say, ah, nah. I want to whoop you, but I ain't. Now, in your heart, you thinking, well, I don't, I don't hate my, my baby because I don't whoop him. You don't think that in your heart. But where they going to end up? If they end up somewhere that they don't need to be because you refuse to do the job that the book tell you to do, you hate them. 
It's telling you what to do. If you refuse to do it and they end up in the pit, you got the answer for that. Let's jump back. Ecclesiastes 30 and verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 30 and verse 2. He that chastises of his son shall have joy in him. He that do what? He that chastises of his son shall have joy in him. I know this for a fact. I ain't been a parent before. A year and some change. <laughs> and I, when my son is super bad, I can't stand it. But when I put that rod to him, and when I come, when I come around, he don't act like that. I'll be good. I'll be trying to figure out what the heck y'all talking about. He do this, he do that. Until I'm, until I'm up here and I can't see. I mean, I can't directly control what's going on. So I see. You get what I'm saying? He don't even cry like that with me. He, ah, boy. <laughs> 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 and then in the same instance, come and hug me, dad, dad. You get what I'm saying? Read. And shall rejoice of him among his acquaintances. Uh huh. He that teacheth his son grieve of the enemy. It said, now it just showed you a difference. If you use the rod, you love him. If you chastise him, you're going to be a joy, filled with joy with him, right? But it says, he that teach him will do what? Grieve the enemy. What is the what is uh, the, the, the powers that be? What do they say that the worst thing for them is? I mean, not the worst thing, but the uh, educated black man. Right? I'm trying to figure out what they say. The, the nightmare of America, an educated black man. I know y'all train y'all kids up and y'all teach them certain things. Like my Aunt Perry, they got his babies reading books, all type of books. You know what I'm saying? Antoine, you, you say you do the same thing? Or Rob? Y'all do the same thing, right? Got to read books, all that type of stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? That's a part of training your child up. Right? Read on. He that teaches his son, greet with the enemy. And before his friends, he shall rejoice in him. How many of y'all been at the crib and you, and you got some family and some friends over and your baby came down and brought you some water and, you know, got you some snacks or something and they was just being all good and nice and everything? You ain't never did that, man. Look at that. But then on the flip side, you got family over and your baby's running wild around the house and all you like, ah, stop! You better stop! And they're like, oh, whatever. You ain't going to put me in front of the company. You feel like that before? They go, oh, you went, they whoop you in front of the car? I'm just making sure. Go ahead. Though his father died, yet he is though he were not dead. He said, though his father died, his father passed away. It's like what? Yet he is as though he were not dead. It's like he not even gone. You get what I'm saying? He's instilled so much into his son, the fear that his father is going to be on his head about something is still prevalent. My wife, for example, I thought he was my wife, for example, all the time. But she tells me how her father was with her, right? And even when she wasn't around him, how in the back of her mind, how disappointed he would be in her if she did this or if she did that. How did it stop her from doing certain things? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna go with that. <laughs> but <laughs> we know as teenagers, you know what I'm saying? You know how you get, right? So in the back of your mind, he's still there. Like he's like he like your father is right here on the earth. Like your mother is right here on the earth. I've had that where it's like if I do this, I know my mama be. She ain't even got to know. I'm a grown man to this day. You get what I'm saying? And in the back of your mind, I, I bet all y'all still go through that, man. My mama be mad at what if I did that. And she ain't even, you ain't even got to go and tell her you're grown. You're grown. You know what I'm saying? You got to let your children have to have that same thought in the back of their mind with you. Read on. Though his father died, yet he is dope, he was not dead. But he have left one behind that is like himself. I wonder who this could be talking about. Mm. Wow. Well, she got gone, right? 
He died. What did he leave with you, though? He left the comforter. That's just like it. it's from him. The Most High ain't dead, right? But he sent down his express image to impute on you the things that the Father wants you to know. We got to do the same thing with our babies. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Read on. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. Uh -huh. And when he died, he was not sorrowful. When Hamashiach was on the scene living, his father said, he said something down. What did he say? Hey, I don't know what he said now. Hamashiach was getting baptized. And, oh. <laughs> all, all right. I mean, I, you know. Say it lot. Right? This is my son and whom I, you know what I'm saying? Whom I am well pleased. Right? We got to be able to say the same thing with our children. And not have a second thought in our, our mind. Like, oh man, I, I'm glad they're doing good in school. Boy, you got a smart mom. We, we ain't supposed to have that type of thought. And y'all ain't supposed to give your parents that thought of you. Greg, you getting big now. I'm about to tell you. When I was 16, I'm trying my father. Got busting my nose. Leaking. I'm talking about lay it out. Don't get there. No doubt. Hey, he, Strong too. He, hey, he, he be right there. You see the you see that uh, that heavy bag shaking. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, man. Your father said something the other day. What do you want to do in life? I still don't know. He said I had till January. <laughs> you got to January. <laughs> what do you aspire to do? Do you want to do what your father do? Have you told him that? No. You ain't never told your dad that? He don't remember. But with the houses. Okay. Well, look, we had a conversation the other day concerning our children, right? And how the things that we used to do or the things that we do now, how they trickle down on our children. Can, are you, did anybody want to be used as an example? I don't want to just, you know, any other brothers who was there? No? 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 Okay, okay. Young Antoine. 18, right? You are a, you are able to get your license at what age? 16. 16. You two years past two, right? No problem, no problem, no harm. But what do you gotta do to get it? Take the road test. Take the road test to do what? To get your license. That's all you got to do. How long has it been since you did it? Uh, now it's, it's snowing outside. The whole night, right? But you ain't done it yet, right? Could you give us the reason why you said that he may be feeling like that? Right? So, we got to understand the, the way that we act, the things that we do, our children look at it closely. You know what I'm saying? You teaching your children stuff without even talking to them. Read on, right? We almost done. While he lived, he saw and rejoiced in him. And when he died, he was sorrowful. He was not sorrowful. He left behind him an avenger against his enemies. Uh -huh. And one that shall re requite kindness to his friends. Verse 7. He that make up too much of his son shall bind up his wounds. If you passive, I'll take that back. You big your babies up too much, they ain't going to understand how the world work when they get out there. You know what I'm saying? You can't just continue, oh yeah, you the best, you this, you that. You, you can't lie to them. If they are the best in that thing, you, you, you let them know. You give them their props. 
But you can't do that with everything and with every situation because it's going to end up hindering them. Right? Read. He that maketh too much of his son shall bind up his wounds, uh -huh. and his bowels be his bowels will be troubled at every cry. Uh -huh. And horse not broken become of headstrong. Anybody lives on a farm? Or saw a horse get broke before? Right? When you break that horse, how obedient is he? Real obedient. When you don't, how much do he book? All the time. Read. And a child left to himself will be willful. A child left to himself will be willful. Um, in the in the in Proverbs, we ain't gonna go there, but it says, if a mother leave her child to himself, he will become ashamed. Meaning, you just let them do their own thing. Hey, go ahead and do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Make your own decisions. The whole nine. Right? You give them complete and total freedom to do whatever they want to do. In your mind, you think that this is the right thing to do. But it's not. Because a person without guidance don't know where they're going. You know what I'm saying? Read on. Conquer thy child, and he shall make thee afraid. What does the word mean, conquer? What does it mean to conquer your child? Coddle them too much. You know what I'm saying? Basically pacify them too much. Right? You pacify your child too much, what's going to happen? And he shall make thee afraid. Uh-huh. Play with him, and he will bring thee to heaviness. Now again, this sounds harsh. I can't play with my child. No, that's not what it's saying. But if you do it too much, you become their friend instead of their parent. You know what I'm saying? And they, and they, it's a thin line. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they come out there. You, you used to saying, "Oh, what you say?" Oh, nah, 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 nah. What you say? You playing with them? And then that one day you serious, and they be like, "Don't be telling me like that." What, what, what? Why are you gonna play with them? You play with them like that? All right, read on. Laugh not with him, lest thou have sorrow with him. Uh -huh. He said, "Don't just, don't just." Uh, Laugh with him in the joyous times. You got to be there with him in the, in the, in the pain. You got to guide your child. Read. At least thou mask, mask thy teeth in the end. What, what does it mean to gnash your teeth? What, what, what is associated with gnashing your teeth? Weeping. What else? Pain. What else though? It's a specific thing. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Where is this going to be at? In hell. Read on. I, it's the, I think this is the key verse. This, matter of fact, yeah, verse 11. Give him no liberty. What does it mean? What does liberty mean? Freedom. Freedom. Read it again. Give him no liberty in his youth. Don't give him liberty in his youth. You have to train your child up. You got to. I heard a saying like from a child from five to seven years old, they basically have set the course of the rest of their life. You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to train up your child. You can't let them deviate from your way. Read. Laugh not with him, least thou become sorrow with him, and least thou gnash thy teeth in the end. Give him no liberty in his youth. And weep not at his folly. When he committing folly, like you know, you see some certain people when they babies say a cuss word, and they get to laughing. Ah, ha, ha, you see that was funny. You supposed to laugh at that? No. Because what's gonna happen? They gonna keep on doing it, and keep on doing it, and keep on doing it, right? And use it on you. I don't see it happen. Trust me. Verse uh, twelve. This now this is what's gonna sound like child abuse, but. The foundation that we done laid so far, you're going to understand what he's talking about when he says. Bow down his neck while he is young, and beat him on the sides while he is a child. So, now he say bow down his neck. Now he ain't talking about grabbing him and... He's saying make him of a lower state. When they do something wrong, you can't make them feel like it's okay. You got to get at him. You have to. Beat 
him on the side. Three. While he is a towel. Least he wax stubborn. Least he do what? Wax stubborn. What happened to the stubborn child? He got stoned. You don't want him to get that way. Get him early. Read. And be disobedient unto thee. The stubborn and disobedient child got stoned. Read. And so bring sorrow to thy heart. Verse 13. Chastise thy son and hold him to labor. Least he lose. Least his lewd behavior be it a fit unto you. Now, it says, hold them to labor. labor. How many of y'all children have chores? I'm talking about real chores. The ones that you had when you was growing up. They need that. That type of structure is what they need. Not all of them. You know, like like my my, uh, my grandfather used to say to my mom, my mom used to have us clean it up all the time, right? We had to clean the bathroom. He'd come in and say, oh, man, don't have him cleaning no bathroom. That's a woman job. Don't have him cleaning no kitchen. That's a woman job, right? Think she listen? No. But it was to instill in us these principles. You have to work, even for your own. This is so much of a technological age that children don't know how to do nothing on their own. Nothing. You have to put them to work. You need chores. 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 You got chores? You need chores. You got chores? Some? You need more. You need chores. You need chores. Y'all need chores. You got chores? Okay. Um, let's close out. Let's get uh, Mark chapter 10 and verse 14. Now, everything that we spoke about when it comes to these children and how they're supposed to be the youth and how you're supposed to do them, now you have to flip it because it concerns you and how you deal with the most high. Your children aren't the only stubborn ones you know. We in agreement? 10 and 14. Don't deprive these babies of the kingdom. Mark chapter 10, verse 14. Uh -huh. But when Yahushua saw it, he was much displeased. Matter of fact, read, read a verse or two up. All right. Start at verse 12. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, I don't know, and they brought young children to him. There we go that he should touch them, and his disciples rebuked those that brought them. So the babies was trying to get at Hamashiach. They just wanted to touch him. Right? And the disciples rebuked them. They kept them from doing what they wanted to do when it came to the Savior. If you keep your children from what they need according to this book, you stand in the stead of these disciples right now. Y'all do understand that, right? Read. But when Yahushua saw it, he was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the suffer the little children to come unto me. You have a direction system to send them to Hamashiach. You got to point them in the right direction. And as in their youth, you got to make them go. You have to make them go. How many of y'all had your parents make y'all go to church on Sunday? After you, after you got grown, how many of y'all stay going to church on Sunday? Even though when you was a, when you was a child, you didn't want to. You hated it. But you found yourself going anyway. They trained you up to do that. Guess what you didn't depart from? That. Right? Read. Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of the Most High. Uh -huh. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of the Most High as a little child, uh -huh. he shall not enter therein. That's key. That's key. One last one. Matthew chapter 12, verse 33. Appreciate <laughs> Matthew chapter 12 and verse 33. Either make the tree good 
and this fruit good? I'm going to say, make the tree good, this fruit good. You're the tree. You got to be good. And the fruit that you bear is going to be good. Reap, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. When you look at your children, they are a reflection of you. You get right and make sure you tight, I promise you, they will be too. But if they don't, if you right and they don't and they don't follow after your footsteps, the blood off your hands. But if you ain't right and they taking on your customs, you got the answer for your child not making it. We in agreement? All right. With that, I say shalom. 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 Questions, comments, concerns, thoughts. Anybody gonna call the police on me? No. Elder.